Hello my lovelies and welcome to this video. Today I thought I would go through the process of how I make my tote bags as a small business at home. And my process is rather simple. There's just a few materials that you're going to need and I'll list them off for you. And this is only what I use. There are so many different ways to do this. This is not the way that you need to do it. Just make sure you do your research. So I use a heat press to print the totes, but an iron can be used. It's not recommended if you're gonna be reselling the bags, but if you wanted to make them at home for yourself, that's fine. Transfer paper, and this can be light or dark, depending on what tote bags that, or material that you're wanting to print on. Light transfer paper will be for lighter materials and dark transfer paper is for darker colors and you're also going to need a printer to print out the designs on this transfer paper i use inkjet but i'm sure there's other options just make sure you get the right paper for your printer and i print with the highest settings i can and the transfer paper should come with wax sheets which you will use to, like after you peel it, we'll get into that process later on. So my process when making tote bags is, firstly, I design the artwork that I'm gonna use and I use Procreate on my iPad for this. Make sure you're only printing your own pictures and artwork because if you use someone else's, that is stealing someone else's copyright and you don't want to do that and you don't want to take other people's artwork anyway it's just not a very good practice but I design my artwork and then I make a word file and in this word file I put my artwork you're gonna need to mirror it if you're using light transfer paper dark transfer paper uses a different process all the instructions will be on the transfer paper that you use well this should be in the pack but just make sure you're researching that and so my image is flipped and I'll print it onto the transfer paper. Then once I've printed that out with my printer, I cut out the artwork, which you saw me doing at the beginning of the video. And while I'm cutting out the artwork, I'll set up my heat press, it'll heat and it heats to 180 degrees Celsius. So it is very hot. So you need to be very careful. You set the temperature yourself on most heat presses or at least the old ones. Some new ones might have like regulated temperature. Mine's pretty old. I got it from eBay in like 2018 or something. So make sure you research what heat press is gonna be good for you, the temperature, how it works. Cause not all of them are gonna look like this. A lot of them look very different and mine is very old. Once the heat press is preheated to whatever degree you need which i use 180 as i've said you place the tote bag on the pad and you need to press the heat press down like you see me doing um in these clips to heat the tote bag and just iron it out get rid of all the wrinkles like things like that and just prep it for putting the design on you need to place the design on after you've pressed it so obviously you'll move the top bit out of the way. You place it on in your desired area. I usually go for the middle and I use the handles to kind of like at the top to kind of line everything up. But there are little things you can get which will show you where the middle is and things like little rulers. I know you can get like heat tape and things, but I don't bother with that stuff. Just make sure again to look up the things that you're going to need for your process. And then once that's pressed for a few seconds, your transfer paper or heat press will tell you how long you need to press it for. But I kind of just eyeball it now. I've been doing it for years and I just kind of go with the flow, I guess. And uh, You're going to peel this off and this will be very hot, but it's very simple and it should just come off very easily. If it peels in with the design off and things, you've either pressed it for too long or too short and you need to look at your instructions for your paper or heat press to see how you're meant to fix that. It does take a lot of trial and error. My first tote bags and even sometimes now do get messed up and you just have to keep trying and 
yeah, it's it's a process. <laughs> so you after you've like peeled everything, and um, you need to put down the wax paper, which you can see me doing now. And this just seals in the design, make sure it's gonna stay there and other magical stuff, you know, and then that's only a few seconds and you peel it off and then you have your tote bag or whatever you've pressed on. I know you can press on like t-shirts and stuff that I've done before and some heat presses come with like other accessories where you can do caps and things like that. I've never tried to do mugs or plates, I do have the add-ons, but you need sublimation ink, so I have no idea how to do that. But for what I do, it's just a very simple process of just what I've just explained, I guess. And I sell these tote bags online and at markets when I go to markets and table at them, which I'm planning to do a lot more. And they're usually quite good sellers, I think. One of the tote bags in my shop, which you've seen me make on here, is the Ghost Street tote bag. And that kind of got big on TikTok in 2020. And it made it so it sold out like loads of times. And I sold about a hundred of them or something, maybe even more. And yeah, it's just, it's definitely worth having tote bags in your shop. And it's something that can be reused. It's like, I don't know, they're just so pretty and having a full colour design is so... I think it's so important to me because I've tried screen print and things like that and other methods and it's just you don't get the whole colour range unless you pay a lot of money. So this really works for me and I'm always happy with how they turn out. And to prep my tote bags after I've finished pressing them all, I will just fold them up so the design is visible and this is useful to send them out in envelopes. I usually send them out in A5 and they squish down enough because it's just like material so they can just go in that letter size and it's also good for tabling at markets because you can fit a lot of tote bags on the table while still showing the designs. Now my heat press is around A3 size which I didn't mention earlier but I only press in A4 because I only have an A4 printer. So there are possibilities for you to print bigger on these tote bags. It just depends on what size you're working with, the paper, the printer, your heat press. My heat press is bigger than most at home heat presses, I would say. A lot of them are just A4. But make sure you do your own research. Don't take my word as gospel, but this is how I create my tote bags and my process and kind of what I've been doing since I don't even know years ago when I first got into this and it took hours of research I think I researched for about a year to figure out what heat press I wanted and there wasn't that many available back then but now there's so many craft companies that have come out with them and they're more accessible I would say and you just you just need to choose what's good for you but yeah thank you so much for watching this video i hope this helped you out i hope that it helps you kind of decide a direction you're gonna go with or just an insight to behind the scenes of my small business i really appreciate your support like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video if it was informative ask any questions in the comments below i will answer what i can uh, just anything and just thank you for watching i will see you in the next one bye